The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Transmission Rates, CBR versus VBR. That is constant bitrate versus variable bitrate. My name is Richard Bell and I am the National CCTV Product Manager at Alarm Corp. Just before we get started, let's run through some general housekeeping. You will notice that you are muted. You will remain muted for the duration of the webinar. Just in, to ensure that you can see our presentation and hear me, can you please click on the hand icon? That's great. I can see lots of hands. You can lower them now. Thank you. At any time you can ask questions and at the end of the webinar I will answer any questions. Just remember to click send after typing your question. Our topic today is an overview of the transmission of video data in relation to IP cameras and the two main methods of this data stream being constant and variable bit weights. Some manufacturers may not use these basic terms, but variation of them. Overall, these are the two that are most commonly used throughout the industry. We will cover the main differences between these and the recommended situations that they would be used. While discussing the situation of each implementation, there are pros and cons of each and these will be explained so that you are aware of the ramifications. Typically with constant bitrate, the image quality is variable by the scene and variable bitrate does offer a stable image. However, this needs to be considered in terms of the overall activity within the scene and especially the speed of what is happening. We will go into this in more detail in the coming slides. Bit rates are referred to as kilobits a second or megabits per second, depending on what type of camera is connected to the system in terms of a 720p HD model or a 1080p full HD running at 1920 by 1080. The amount of information required on the network cable to move this data is greater as the camera type increases in resolution in order to obtain the best result from the camera. Each situation is different but typically a 720p camera will be best set at around 1.5 to 2 megabits per second and a 1080p camera at 3 to 4 megabits per second. The overall CCTV system is made up of a number of cameras connected in the majority of cases via CAT5 or CAT6 cabling. Depending on the bitrate chosen, the network design needs to be considered as well. Typically these days, switches have increased from the 10 slash 100 megabit hubs on the edge device, that is the camera that it's connected to, to a minimum of a 100 bit Ethernet network switch port. The number of cameras connected to a switch is typically 16 to 24. These are then connected to a core switch via an uplink either by copper or fiber on a gigabit connection. With these connection speeds, they are not typically affected by the bottlenecks if the equivalent has been dedicated to the CCTV system. When these factors are decided upon, it is possible to calculate the storage requirements of the overall system with the aid of various calculators that the manufacturers of CCTV products provide. The main practical surveillance challenge is that the scene complexity can vary even on the same camera and across just a few hours. If the camera is set to use too little bandwidth, the image quality will suffer. Likewise, if it is configured to use too much bandwidth, you end up using excess amounts of storage that is wasted. 
for example, a camera looking at an external fire door is going to have a quieter scene than the main entrance where it is necessary to be able to use the chemist for ID purposes. I mentioned storage requirements when estimating the amount required for a system. In this example here, we have used the Verin storage calculator for the next of EMS to calculate the disk space required. This system has been configured with 20 HD cameras and 10 full HD cameras. The highlighted area has the bitrate information for each camera. Please make note of the average bitrate for each camera. That is 1095 kilobits a second and 2312 kilobits a second for the 720p and 1080p cameras respectively. This calculation here has the same parameters as the previous slide with the exception that the amount of time shown in the motion uh, scene has increased from 25% to 50%. The average bit rate from the camera has increased to 1406 kilobits per second and 2970 kilobits per second for the two cameras. The storage for the 30 day period that we chose as the default has also increased from 13.3 to 17 terabytes. It is important that this sort of information is known when calculating the difference in the scene activity. The amount of storage required in a data center type environment is going to be different to that of a shopping center. Even within the same facility, it may be necessary to adjust parameters on certain cameras, such as entrances that are used for identification of people, and extreme detail is required. This last example indicates a custom bitrate that can be entered to override the default settings from the manufacturer. In this case, we have chosen to have a 2000 kilobit or 2 megabit and 4000 kilobit um, per second setting so we can see what the overall effect is on the storage component. You can see that this has increased up to 18.6 terabytes. The compression mode that is used as a default for modern IP cameras is H.264. There are still some of the older technology units in the field using MPEG or MPEG-4 compression. The amount of disk space required for these does increase dramatically. In the majority of cases, it is not effective to maintain these older cameras as the cost for disk space, let alone the image quality that is required in a modern day system. This diagram gives a visual overview of what the various transmission rates look like with a Sony camera. The peak of the VBR configured system on the left would take up a lot more disk space. The two middle images are capped at the CBR rate and while they do have the storage side under control, the customer is still going to experience some choppy images. On the right hand side of the picture, the 4 meg bandwidth setting on the Sony camera does use the full 4 meg bandwidth and this allows the best possible image to be generated. It tries to provide the best of both situations with the best image while keeping the storage file sizes under control. The next slide will show a visual indication of what is displayed here graphically. While these images are snapshots, they do give an indication of the captured image. The speed of the scene is important for the initial ramp up and that's where the main problem of VBR exists. Even with the scene being ramped up, the difference between 4 and 8 meg might not seem significant. When you apply it to a system comprising of 100 cameras, it does have a massive effect on the storage required. I mentioned earlier about the reference to speed in a scene and the result that can be seen with this truck on a road. If a camera is set to VBR, it can take a short period to ramp up to desired activity level. The result is that part of the image may appear blocky. This is always a trade-off and each situation needs to be addressed. 
The setup and commissioning of the system is important and trial runs of various scenarios should be done during the install phase of the project so as to avoid footage that is blurred and grainy when exported. I briefly touched on the subject of compression. In addition to the bit rate selection, the modern day compression formats also play a part. Older MPEG-4 and MPEG formats had issues with fast moving objects. The adoption of H.264 over the last decade has assisted with this, as this example shows not only with clarity but with far reduced disk space requirements. Not every scene is going to be as fast paced as a sporting event, but it does show what happens when things are pushed to the upper limits. As per the previous slide, the compression type that has been applied to this image, as well as the amount of bandwidth, also has had a significant effect on the end result. I can't emphasise much as much uh, that the trial runs for not only viewing but export of video needs to be considered uh, during the um, commissioning of this, uh, these systems. I hope this brief interview, overview into the technology and transmission types of constant variable bandwidths and how they affect picture quality and storage in a CCTV, CCTV system has been beneficial. Would you like to know more? The information of brochures and data sheets can be found at the Alarm Corp website. You can subscribe to the Alarm Corp Pulse newsletter to receive new product information automatically. Or register online at the website to receive full access to our e-commerce platform, including pricing and order placement. Contact your nearest Alarm Corp representative. Jeff Rushton in New South Wales, ACT in Queensland. Diane Brazil, also for New South Wales, ACT in, and Queensland. Myself, or Stephen Dinger in Victoria, South Australia and WA. We can also be found on Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter. Just search for Alarm Corp with, under the following. Alarm Corp will be conducting regular webinars for the remainder of the year. Every third Thursday we will be holding an intrusion based webinar and every second Wednesday a CCTV webinar for, to register for any future webinar or view any previous webinar please visit the Alarm Corp website, click on resources then webinars. When you attend one of our webinars, you will have access to special promotions. For all purchases made online through our e-commerce platform, please enter the promo code MAYWEB14 during checkout to receive an additional 10% off your already discounted trade prices. This applies to nearly all Alarm Corp's product ranges with a few exceptions as listed. Let's answer some of the questions. If you have a question, now's the time to type it and hit send. Okay, here's the, uh, the first one. I've noticed that I have a camera using a lot of storage on VBR, even though it is in a relatively quiet environment. This can happen. You need to be aware of items that are in the field of view of the camera. That is, say a tree out of window that is always moving, or even in a data center type environment where there are a lot of LEDs on equipment that are always flickering away. This causes movement and can cause a high uh, bandwidth in a VBR configured system. Oh, next question. In terms of the bandwidth for the cameras, are there any other overheads that need to be considered. That's a good point. Yes, we have discussed the recording side of the video stream, 
but the amount of data required to play back the cameras also needs to be considered in the overall equation. In a large system, it is best to have the cameras on their own network. The client software that will play back the footage is located on a different subnet within the network. Smaller systems can use one network for both, but you must be aware of the total throughput of the network interface in the recording device, whether this is a dedicated network recorder or a rack mount server with the VMS software installed. Uh, can you adjust any other parameters for recording? The simple answer is yes. But you need to look at the specific VMS uh, in question. Typically a VMS have more options than a dedicated standalone network video recorder. You know, from within the video profiles, you know, set up, there's compressions that can be adjusted. When a high quality image is not essential, you can adjust the minimum compression. This will have an effect on bandwidth and storage. You know, likewise, if the opposite is required for maximum quality, these are normally controlled by a sliding scale in the respective video profile um, configuration uh, areas on your VMS. You know, default settings cover the majority of your standard requirements, but as always, it's a matter of trial and error to see what works for best for you um, and your customer. Okay, there doesn't seem to be any more questions, I'd just like to run a brief summary. You know, there's a number of points to be considered when choosing the different transmission methods you know, uh, within a um, video management system. You know, the image qualities that's required to be viewed on playback, I can't emphasise enough about how critical this is, especially after an event and when the detail you know, is important. You know, the network infrastructure, you know, quality Ethernet switches, whether they're PoE or just data only devices, they are the method of joining these devices from the camera to the recording disks and VMS and need to be able to handle the traffic without dropping packets. The storage amount required for the system and what is configured in a RAID 5 or RAID 6 system is another area that affects overall space required for a recording server. How the storage devices are configured with the required number of disk drives as well as providing a flexible future path as the system grows and whether these are direct attach or via a network connection over Ethernet. This particular topic will be covered um, further in a later webinar. And lastly, you know, an important factor driving a system design is the budget. IP cameras have changed the way in which we deploy surveillance systems and the storage required has increased dramatically from the analog systems in the past that had a maximum of four SIF as a recording resolution. The type of camera specified together with the recording design considerations will affect the overall space required to store the video for the predetermined time, be that 7, 30 or 60 days. These modern systems are taking on more of an IT component and have changed from the coax and figure eight power of the past analog systems. Thank you for attending our webinar. We appreciate the time taken from your schedule to attend today and hope you found it beneficial. We look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. I hope you enjoy the remainder of your day. Goodbye.